Hello Enchanted Ones, and welcome back to another video. Today, join me as I find inspiration, make foods and drinks, perhaps a spell or two, for a spiritual spring picnic dreams are made of. So sit back, relax, and keep on watching. There comes a time in spring when it seems nature is unstoppable in its growth and energy, and recently in the woods, I have been exploring hidden paths to find little fairies' dens, and a few days ago, I had a sudden urge to visit the woods, and it was just as evening fell. The sun was so low and mesmerising that I began to follow its rays when I came across a winding path with a few bluebells next to it. And as I travelled up, further down the path, there became more and more bluebells and the path led me to a huge bluebell wood. I was swept off my feet and a childlike energy came over me, taking me into another realm. I felt like I was a little fairy exploring the wood and with more dancing and exploration I came across another beautiful place, this time hidden away, home to more of these delicate dancing fairies. Their beautiful purple colour entranced me and I felt my imagination taking over. I then realised that in front of these bluebells was an open space that was delicately covered by this beech tree and I thought to myself, what a perfect spot for a picnic. But not just any type of picnic, a spiritual picnic. But you may ask, what is a spiritual picnic? Well, it's simple, very simple magic. I see a spiritual picnic as a ritual from start to finish, from the different foods and colours you incorporated, the intention behind these food, and as a bonus, the energy of the nature you are surrounded by, magnifying the energy of everything as a whole. If your area does not have spring weather at the moment, do not fret. You could always turn this into a spiritual tea party instead. Firstly, I wanted to come up with a plan that incorporated foods that were in season and the energies of the foods were thrown by the energy of spring. This will help us to ground ourselves and connect with the spring energy. So I turn my attention to my herb garden. There is an abundance of herbs growing at a rapid pace here and this was mainly my inspiration so you can really change these recipes today with what surrounds you in your home if you'd like to. The main thing that stood out to me was the beautiful lavender that these baby bees were joyously pollinating. The colour of the lavender took me back to the woods and the bluebells and I wondered is there something more to this colour? purple. I believe that purple vibrates on one of the highest frequencies of colours, therefore it is vibrating at the same level as our crown chakra. The crown chakra is located at the top of our heads and is connected to our imagination, astral selves and can help to connect us with spirits. And it all made sense. No wonder why I felt like I was in a dream whilst visiting these bluebells. From this, I had the idea to incorporate the lavender to help tap into my guests' crown chakras, taking them to that fairy realm I found myself, but also to help with a divination ritual I plan on doing during the picnic. I am going to make lavender scones. Welcome to my magical kitchen. And today I will be joined by my fairy friend to help us make everything magical. And all recipes will be left down below. The key with making lavender scones is keeping everything cold. So I first put the bowl into the freezer for 10 minutes, then measured out 
four cups of flour and one teaspoon of baking powder. Then measured three ounces of unsalted butter, which I rubbed in with my fingertips. Then it was time for the magic, the lavender. For this recipe, I am using British lavender, which is quite easy to find. I would avoid using French lavender, as this has a quite soapy taste, unless you like that flavour, of course. I put in two thirds of a teaspoon, but if you are using fresh lavender, two teaspoons would be best. In a separate bowl, I cracked in two eggs. Taking two tablespoons out of this for the glaze and then added a half a cup of milk. Pouring this on top of the mixture and stirring this together with a metal spoon to keep it nice and cold. Once all incorporated together, I tipped it onto a surface and rolled it to be two centimetres thick and then cut. However, do not twist the cutter or the scones will not rise properly. Trust me, I learnt the hard way. I then placed the egg as a glaze on top and it was on to the next item. Before my guests eat the sweet scones, I want to serve them something savoury and grounding. So for this, I chose focaccia bread. This is so simple to make and a real showstopper. You simply need to weigh strong bread flour into a bowl. And then on opposite sides of the bowl, add salt and the yeast. Pour on top the water and mix and mix. And during the kneading process, I set an intention on this bread. As I mentioned, this is going to be a loaf to help ground my guests before our ritual. So I wanted it to represent all the elements and the divine. With each knead, I repeated, earth, air, fire, water, divine, and repeated this over and over. When the bread is eaten, my guests will be protected, but also a lovely symbolism to bring to the woods, to honor all the elements that surround us. The bread needed to be proved twice, each time for an hour. The first time in a bowl, and the second time spread onto a baking sheet. And during the second proof, I got to work cutting vegetables that were all the colours of the spectrum. Again, to go with the idea that this bread will represent the universe. Once proved, I made a little design honouring the pentacle, but also adding herbs such as thyme for purification and rosemary for protection. I find using herbs that are in season really helps us ground us into the season and raises our vibration to be on par with the time of year. When this bread was in the oven, it was time for my third and final item on the menu, and it was the simplest of all, oaty, seedy, fruity bites. The magic of these oat bites is that the seasoned side are very grounding and can really help my guests come back down to earth after the ritual. You can easily put in them any seeds you feel connected with or have in the cupboard, so do not feel you need the same recipe as me. As long as the quantity is the same, you will have a beautiful little bite to enjoy at the end of your picnic. Now everything was complete, it was time to pack up my picnic basket. And it was off to my special spot to set everything up. I hope you enjoy. Just as I unpacked my picnic, in true British timing, it started to rain. But that didn't get in the way of my picnic. So the spiritual tea was served.
We began the picnic with the focaccia bread and I explained to my guests that this represented the elements and the divine to honour the energies that surrounded us and to ask them for protection. I served the bread with fruitities and hummus and I loved seeing the spectrum of colours so healthy and can really boost the energy. Next it was time to connect with the divine, with the lavender scones. I served these with clotted cream and on top local honey. The lavender and the honey is a great tribute to one of the most beautiful fairies within the wood, the bumblebee. I explained that the scones were to help raise our crown chakra vibration and connect us to the divine and the spirits within nature. And it was because it was time for our ritual. Tea leaf reading using spring flowers and herbs. For this, I needed hot water and the petals of two dandelions. It is said that dandelion tea helps to cool the spirits and they have been used in divination for centuries. As well as this, I customised my tea by adding mint from my herb garden, which I tore up, and a dash of honey. These two ingredients bring a magical taste to the tea, so I highly recommend them. Upon stirring this tea, I thought of a question in mind to ask the spirits of the forest, and when cool enough, I began sipping my tea, being mindful and again thinking of the question I wanted to ask the spirits. When the water was near the bottom of the teacup, I swirled the cup three times in my hand and said the question out loud. I then turned the cup over onto the saucer, being careful as the water will pour out. And after a few minutes, I turned the cup over to see an array of symbols. To research what these symbols mean, I have a book which I will leave the link for down below. But there are also some great websites to help you uncover what these symbols mean and a lot of other ways in which you can practice tea leaf reading as this is just a very simple approach. But do also feel free to use your own tuition because if you think a certain symbol means something to you, you are probably right. We then relaxed and had fun and then it was time to eat the oaty seedy bites. However, even though they were so tempting, I held off from eating mine. You see, I wanted to embrace my crown chakra a little more, not continuing with the divination, but this time connecting to my imagination. And today I am going to become that forest fairy once again. Thank you so much for watching Enchanted Ones. Please let me know what was your favourite below and how would you customise your own spiritual picnic to what's around you? All of my love, Arwen.